May it please you, Madam Speaker. I rise to support the bill shortly titled the Appropriation Bill 2024-2023 and to justify to the good people of St. Kitts and Nevis the total allocations of 3.125 million EC dollars in capital projects and 24.1 EC million dollars in recurrent expenditure for the operations of the Attorney General's Office and the Ministry of Justice and Legal Affairs. Madam Speaker, as my budget is only 2.5% of the overall budget, I intend to take 2.5% of the five hours and 24 minutes taken by the mover of the bill. In other words, I intend to be brief. My goal, Madam Speaker, is to unveil how the Attorney General's Office and the Ministry of Justice and Legal Affairs will assist in charting a course for our Federation towards our transformation as a sustainable island state, with particular focus on meeting the various UN SDGs, especially SDG 16, Peace, Justice, and Strong Institutions. But before I begin in earnest, Madam Speaker, allow me to send a special thanks to the Honorable Member for St. Christopher 8 and the other members of Parliament on this side for giving me a chance to serve the country I love so much. Being able to stand in this most important court humbles me, and I'm proud to serve the good people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Madam Speaker, as can be gleaned from the various addresses during this session, your government is in good hands. My 72-year-old aunt, a constant critic of all governments here and abroad, said to me last night, this is the best budget she ever heard, and I concur. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Watching this <laughs> 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 And this administration, Madam Speaker, has a clear, realistic, and achievable vision. These are all good people doing the good that they can do for all of the people of our federation. These are the people who want to bring a sustainable island state for the benefit of this generation and generations to come. These are the people who are working tirelessly on behalf of the good people of St. Kitts and Nevis, day in and day out. And I have no hesitation to say that, Madam Speaker, because I see the hard work that is being put in, day in, day out. The strides of this young, energetic administration has made in 16 months have been acknowledged regionally and internationally. Our people must know that, Madam Speaker. We are well respected regionally and internationally for our modern approach to governance, our energy, and our commitment to achieving a sustainable island state. Madam Speaker, when the regional entities want to launch an initiative, you know who they call? They call us. And you know why they call us? They say, because you all look like you all are ready, you all are energetic, you all are young, even the senior minister. Look how fresh he looks, Madam Speaker. <laughs> <laughs> because I see the energy, Madam Speaker, and I'm not joking. I want the people of this country to know that regionally we are very well respected. They're excited about things happening in St. Kitts and Nevis. I get messages all the time from our colleagues in the region. They say it's just exciting to see what's going on here. And I'm so proud to be part of a team that is setting the trend in the region in particular. Madam Speaker, I wear four hats as the People's Attorney General and Minister of Legal, Justice and Legal Affairs. First, the constitutional role as principal legal advisor to the government and thereby leader of the Attorney General's office, a team of lawyers that provides the best possible advice to the various ministries and offices that make up the government. Secondly, the role of ensuring that the government's legislative agenda is met by drafting strong laws to be refined by cabinet and thereafter brought to this National Assembly for debate. My third hat, Madam Speaker, 
is the administrative role in supporting the important independent operations, and I want to stress that, independent operations of the Director of Public Prosecution's Office, the Integrity in Public Life Commission, and the Supervisor of Elections Office. And lastly, Madam Speaker, fourthly, the role as Minister of leading the Ministry of Justice and Legal Affairs, which consists of the Law Commission, the Land Registry, the High Court Registry, the Magistrate's Court Registry, the Intellectual Property Office, and the brand new Access to Justice Agency. So Madam Speaker, as I go through the accomplishments, the plans, and the justifications with respect to the AGO, which is the Attorney General's Office, and the Ministry, my refrain today, Madam Speaker, is not just talk, action, and results. Madam Speaker, when I used to prosecute over 10 years ago, and when I was being trained as a prosecutor, I was told two things when you're addressing a jury. One, be brief. And two, have a theme so that the jury can go back to that theme, whatever you say. And I want the theme for today, Madam Speaker, to be not just talk, action, and results. Madam Speaker, I want the people listening throughout the Federation. I want the persons watching the sign language throughout the Federation to know that refrain, think about it, and whatever I say, think if I'm telling the truth, Madam Speaker, not just talk, action, and results. Madam Speaker, the main accomplishment of the Attorney General Office team in 2023 is that we saved the government approximately easy $5 million in our budget for claims against the government. How did we accomplish this, Madam Speaker? Simply by changing the attitude of the office, by defending lawsuits that needed to be defended, instead of the ridiculous policy that I met of settling matters without fighting, just so certain unity-aligned lawyers could get their legal fees paid easily. Five million dollars, Madam Speaker, which can go towards the construction of desalination plants, urgent overseas medical care for our children, and smart homes for our most vulnerable. I wish to thank the AGO team, Madam Speaker, led by the Solicitor General, Ms. Simone Bullen Thompson, who subscribed to my policy and the attitude change. Not just talk, Madam Speaker, action and results. When I took office, Madam Speaker, I met a whole industry of lawyers suing the state for any and everything. The AGO's budget for claim against the government was like a money tree for some lawyers. Madam Speaker, the AGO budget for outsourcing legal work was like a money tree for some unity cronies. Those trees have been uprooted. Some are upset. I don't care, that's their business. Protection of the public purse is our number one priority at the Attorney General's office. We are defending the people of St. Gitz and Nevis. Easy, easy boy. <laughs> Madam Speaker, we made this change not only by changing the mindset of the office, but by employing and reassigning lawyers who are prepared to fight to protect our treasury. In 2024, we have made positions available so that we can continue to recruit more lawyers who are prepared to fight for the people of this good nation. During 2023, Madam Speaker, the AGO team spent hours and hours working on the Solex Skellic Power Purchase Agreement. The minister can testify to that. Hours, Madam Speaker, trying to get it right. We spent hours on the desalination plant water purchase agreement that is coming very soon. We spent hours on the East Coast housing smart home agreement, Madam Speaker. Various investment agreements and various MOUs. We collaborated with almost all of the ministries with respect to very important legal documents, Madam Speaker. My team works very hard and I'm thankful for them. Our legislative drafting team, Madam Speaker, we prepared and presented to Cabinet and Parliament 24 bills in 2023, 21 of which were successfully passed into law this year. Not just talk, action, and results. Of those, Madam Speaker, the highlights for me are the good governance transformation legislation. Madam Speaker, there is no 
greater support or no greater action that matches the SDG goal 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions than our good governance transformation. We came into this house. We brought a brand new anti-corruption act. We passed it. It's now in force. It includes corruption-related offenses. It sets up the office of the special prosecutor. And it stops, I hope, corruption in this country till kingdom come. There are some people in this house, Madam Speaker, who don't want ever working government again, you know, because of this. Because they can't get away with the things they were getting away with before. And the DPP is very serious. I don't know who, turned, who tuned in to the Good Governance Transformation launch a couple of Fridays ago, but he has his charges drafted already. He's very serious, Madam Speaker. That is an institution changing law. Madam Speaker, we came to this honorable house and we debated the Integrity in Public Life Amendment. And after debating that, public servants, senior government officials, persons in this house, have now filed their declarations to the Integrity Commission. Madam Speaker, not just talk, action and results. 16 months. Madam Speaker, we came to this house. We passed the Freedom of Information Amendment Act. Madam Speaker, there are no information officers assigned in every ministry. So anybody from the general public, the press, can now apply for whatever information they want. Once it falls, once it doesn't fall within the exceptions, and they can get that information through the mechanism of the Freedom of Information Act. Yes, and start making up fake things and actually investigate instead of just going, getting their news on social media, Madam Speaker, so that the people could ask the press, um, Mr. Journalist, did you get that information through an application on the Freedom of Information Act? Did you do your job? We need to hold the press's feet to the fire as well. They are the fourth estate. We did that. Not just talk, Madam Speaker, actions and results. We then brought the Whistleblower Protection Act, Madam Speaker, which allows persons in the public service <coughs> who seek corrupt activity, illegal activity, to be able to report it to the designated authorities. Madam Speaker, that is an important part of the institutional structure that we are building in this good governance transformation. That is now enforced, Madam Speaker, and the protections are there. Not just talk, actions, and results. Madam Speaker, we then pass the Unauthorized Disclosure of Official Information Bill, which is now law, to prevent the leaking of privileged, confidential, and sensitive government information. The same information you cannot get through the Freedom of Information infrastructure. You should not be able to get to the back door. As I said, corruption can be offering a public servant money to leak a document to them. We have closed that back door. Madam Speaker. So all those five laws, Madam Speaker, this year alone, this year alone, not just talk, action and results. Madam Speaker, we came to this house and passed a Consumer Affairs Act. I remember Dr. Douglas, the member for number six, come in to me. He said, AG, my team needs a strong Consumer Affairs Act. And Dr. Douglas, we delivered it. Now your team, now your team has the teeth to protect the people, Madam Speaker. Not just talk, actions and results. Madam Speaker, we resolve the issue with the Nevis civil proceedings matters, which the court ruled last summer. A collaborative effort between the Attorney General's Office and the legal department of the NIA. We didn't just talk about it. We brought the bills to the House. We debated them. We solved the issue. Now, the long-standing practice of the NIA being sued for matters that involve the NIA is now resolved permanently. Not just talk action and results. Madam Speaker, 
we brought into force new CBI regulations. Man Steaker, by those regulations, we eliminated underselling, we regulated advertisements, we increased the investment thresholds so that there's actually substantial investment in the country instead of the bubble that was going on before. And we introduced the public benefit option, Madam Speaker, and I want the people to know that option was crafted to not only benefit foreign entities and foreign business people, but local business people. Once you have a good business plan or infrastructural development, which will, one, bring substantial benefit to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, two, maximize local employment, or three, embark upon programs including transfer of technology and local capacity building, you can qualify to raise capital through the public benefit option. Our CBI industry cannot just be for foreigners to benefit. Our local people must benefit as well. So I encourage all local entrepreneurs and innovators to visit the Citizenship by Investment Unit to explore the options available to raise capital. Madam Speaker, for example, a local business can raise two million US dollars in capital by selling less than 10 public benefit units. Madam Speaker, why not take advantage of it? The CBI program was created to help the people. The people should be able to get a direct benefit from it. So we're very proud of the new regulations in that regard. Madam Speaker, we also rationalized and clarified the cannabis-related legislation in this Honorable House in 2023. SDG 8, Decent Work and Economic Growth. SDG, Dr. Clark, you might have to help me one. Responsible consumption and production. Which SDG is that? I think it's 10. 10. We're ensuring by the legislation passed this year, Madam Speaker, that there will be a medicinal cannabis industry in St. Kitts and Nevis that our traditional growers and other persons can take advantage of and make careers from and make successful businesses from, Madam Speaker. Not just talk, action, and results. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I want to clarify, because they like to pull clips from the AG and put them, SDG 12. They like to put clips from the AG from Parliament on social media, right? Madam Speaker, I want them to put this one on social media. <laughs> we gave the cannabis smokers, the persons who use cannabis for their, for their um, edification, we gave them the option to be able to use cannabis lawfully. We also decriminalized the use of cannabis. But with a right comes a responsibility, Madam Speaker. If you get your license issued under the Freedom of Conference, Freedom of Conscience Cannabis Act. You can legally cultivate five cannabis plants in a private place in your private premises. If you get that license, you can possess up to two ounces of cannabis in public places. If you do not get those license, that license, you could be subject to a $50 ticket. If you get a license, you can smoke cannabis in designated smoking areas. All smokers, whether cannabis, cigarettes, vapes, you will, you will, this Christmas, this carnival, get a $500 ticket if you smoke outside the designated smoking areas. Madam Speaker, you got a right. With a right comes a responsibility. There will be designated smoking areas during carnival, during events. We piloted it at the music festival, it was successful. We then did it at the independent concert, it was successful. I went in there myself to have conversations with people in that area. Oh, not to, just not to smoke? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I went to have conversations. Conversations. <laughs> High conversations. Yes, because they're gonna say the AG coming to support the law and he ain't coming to see what's going on. So I went in, the deputy, the deputy prime minister and I, the Deputy Prime Minister and I went in the area and we had conversations with persons in the area. Yes, yes. We found out what was working and what might, they might not have liked. And they, they seemed all very happy in that area, I must say. 
Yes. So, Madam Speaker, you know, that was a little jovial moment, but I want to be serious. If you want to give back the workers' Christmas bonus that the Prime Minister gave to you, that $500, if you want to give it back to the Treasury, smoke in public, smoke in the bank, because the police will be out there. You will have your areas if you want to smoke. You go in the area, you smoke, and you come back in the band. There are people who want to enjoy their Christmas and their carnival without being subjected to any smoke. And this is not about cannabis only. Cigarettes, vapes, any smoke. So you have your right, you have your area, stay within your area, and let other people who are asthmatic, other people who just cannot stand smoke, to also be able to enjoy. That is the point. The point is we all want to live comfortably together, Madam Speaker. So, as I said, and I hope they take this clip, if you want to give back your workers' Christmas bonus that the Prime Minister so lovingly gave to you, smoke in public, because you will be getting a $500 ticket. Madam Speaker, I just want to also clarify what you should not do. You shouldn't drive under the influence of cannabis, Get a designated driver. You shouldn't be selling it unless you're licensed to do so under the Medicinal Cannabis Authority, by the, by the Medicinal Cannabis Authority. No children. Do not give cannabis to anyone under 18 years of age. Do not be around schools with cannabis. Do not take it on school premises. Do not, be within 300, do not smoke within 300 feet of a school. With a right comes responsibility, and that's not that hard. And when you're storing and handling it, Make sure that it's not available for minors to be able to access it very easily. That's all we ask of you. And for more information, Madam Speaker, I want the general public to go to CannabisClaritySKN.com, which has all of the details they need to know. We are also launching an education campaign this carnival season. You'll see posters, you'll see social media posts, there'll be a jingle on the radio, so people are aware as to what their rights are, as well as their responsibilities, Madam Speaker. Repeat this, Cannabis what? CannabisClaritySKN.com CannabisClaritySKN.com We did a lot of work on getting that website launched, and I want our people to visit it. Madam Speaker, I spoke about 2023, but we are debating the 2024 budget. In 2024, Madam Speaker, our people could look forward to debates on Constitutional Education and Reform Committee Act to take us on a path to educating our people about their constitution and to bring an infrastructure in place where we can have modernization and changes in a strategic and stakeholder-centric way to our constitution, Madam Speaker. National Productivity Council Act, we already drafted it. You heard the Minister of Labor speak about that. If you're going to have your minimum wage increase, your productivity should similarly increase. So we are going to put into place legislation which will solidify that council to be able to advise the government as to what needs to be done to increase productivity in our society. We cannot become a sustainable island state if we don't have efficient, productive people. Our people are all we have. We don't have oil and gas. And Madam Speaker, if I can just go on a side note. During the, the, the annual, the ECCB 40th anniversary lecture, they brought in a gentleman who used to be Mandela's financial advisor from South Africa. And he's now a professor at Oxford and a top economist. And you know what resonated with me from his presentation, Madam Speaker? He said, AI, artificial intelligence, is going to take away a lot of rudimentary jobs. But AI cannot take away jobs where it requires the personal touch. Madam Speaker. So our people have to get employment and find opportunities where there's a personal touch. AI is not going to build that cabinet in your kitchen. AI is not going to work in the tourism sector, driving an open-air bus. What do they call them, uh, Madam Minister? A safari. 
Our people need to take advantage of those opportunities because those jobs will always be there. Madam Speaker. So I make that plea. And productivity is key. Madam Speaker, after discussions with the member for number three, we're going to bring an anti-nepotism bill to this House for debate next year, Madam Speaker, to protect our society from the destructive nepotism of the past. Madam Speaker, we're going to bring the Nutter Amendments to this House. The Nutter Amendments. To bring our civil service into compliance with the decisions in the Leon Nutter Nelson case, which successfully challenged the constitutionality of restrictions on civil servants actively participating in the political process. Madam Speaker, we're going to bring the Community Beautification and Safety Act piloted by the Minister of Sustainable Development. Yes. It's going to create year-round work for our young people to keep our communities beautiful and safe. What you said in your, in your program is, um, Prime Minister, is no longer peace, it's called Elevate. This program, that bill, is going to allow some young men to elevate out of that life and become entrepreneurs and have year-round work, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, also with the Minister of Sustainable Development, we're going to bring a Land Allocation Act. Yes. So no longer the whims and fancies of individuals can determine our land policy. And no one, no one what, Madam Senator? Oh, she didn't say anything, Madam Speaker. <laughs> we're going to ensure, Madam Speaker, that the persons who need land and to start their journey towards wealth creation will be the persons who are prioritized for land allocation, Madam Speaker. And we're going to put that into law. Madam Speaker, we're going to bring a new procurement act to protect our treasury, just in case the criminals that ran our government before <coughs> ever get in again, God forbid, so that for example, the 2 million US, 5.4 million EC dollars that was spent by Skellig in 18 months to one man won't happen again. Persons have to bid for that. Dr. August, I don't think you heard me. You heard me correct? <laughs> $5.4 million. Wow. Million dollars in 18 months. One man. Get all the projects for Skellig. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, um, I, see, I see the member for Nevis now looking at me. Member? Can I be one man? I was getting that one contract. People just drop doc documents on my desk, you know, Madam Speaker. They just come and they say, AG, look this. And every time I just say, oh, Lord, what a Lord of mercy. One contractor. A real contractor. Well, I don't know. But I know that one person, 18 months, Skellig paid 2 million US, 5.4 million EC dollars to. We need procurement, Madam Speaker. Because you know what? Procurement will help that. All of the state agencies will be required to bid. All we want is value for money. You didn't hear the minister say? She just laid the surface at the airport. It came within budget mm -hmm. and on time. Competent leadership. Competent leadership, responsible contractors. We have decent contractors throughout the country. Why shouldn't they get an opportunity to bid on projects from Skellec? Why was one person get, in 18 months, $5.4 million in projects? The same person get a load of million dollars from sports before, but I ain't gonna go there. Right? But Madam Speaker, when we do these things, we're doing these things for the good of the people. All the procurement process is for the Procurement Act that was brought by the member for number six when he was prime minister. The intention was to get value for money. Simple as that. Value for money. If a project is worth $100,000, you bring persons. If somebody is $300,000, you send them and say, go and come again instead of giving the person for 300,000. Value for money, Madam Speaker. We're gonna bring a strong procurement act very early in the new year, because that is very important. 
And Speaker, we're also going to revolutionize the Citizenship and Passport Acts. And Madam Speaker, we've had to do that because, as the Prime Minister has said numerous times in the past, there was a citizenship by marriage scam. Over 1,000 people, Madam Speaker. When I saw the spreadsheet, I nearly cried. 1,000 people. <laughs> let me, uh, sorry, let me clarify that, Madam Speaker. Over a thousand people paid <coughs> illegally, paid citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis to be married to them. So they could get married one day, get their citizenship the next day, their passport the next day, and register to vote the day after. Wow. Literally. Literally, as the member for number eight said. No, no. Well, the 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 the, the, the one case that I saw, the 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 statement from the gentleman who received the eight thousand dollars from the foreign person to get married, said that he asked to kiss his wife, and the lawyer in the room said, no, 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 that's not part of the deal. That's more money. <laughs> and, and Madam Speaker, we laugh. We laugh, Madam Speaker. But there are over a thousand non-nationals who paid between 2019 and 2022 when we cut it off. The Minister of National Security can testify to that. That paid. When I saw the spreadsheet, Madam Speaker, I'd nearly cry. Because I, I heard it. I was told about it. But when you actually see the spreadsheet and you see the number of people that paid it, they opened the floodgates in 2009. We're closing those, we closed those floodgates and we know we're going to close them by legislation. We've already drafted with the, with the assistance of the Ministry of National Security. 2019. 2019 to 2022. We've already drafted marriage regulations. And it's simple, you know, Madam Speaker, I need to explain to the people. You have a right to be registered as a citizen of St. and Nevis if you are married to a citizen. However, in that process of registration, the minister has a legal right to verify if it is a legitimate marriage. Simple as that. So we've created a system where there'll be marriage verification officers that will come to your house and say, do you all cook together? You know, do you all have children? You know, do, are there any pictures in the house of the two of you? And over a period, the marriage verification officer could come back to the minister or the PS and say, well, this is a legitimate marriage. These people live together. They have pictures together. They went to the child uh, preschool graduation. And this is a legitimate marriage. So this person can now be registered as a citizen. Simple as that. But before, you pay to get married one day, you get your citizenship certificate the next day, you get your passport the next day, and you go register the vote. All in a little space at Liverpool Row and Central Street. Oh boy. Yeah. I remember when I used to see Gina. <laughs> oh I mean, what about the vote? Can you have the vote? Yeah, you can have the vote. Yes, oh, um, I, the member for number six asked about divorce. We have a case of somebody getting divorced so you could get the next set of money. Divorce, divorce from the person who paid him the eight to eight to eleven thousand was the market rate. Wow. He said, buy another one, another eight thousand. Let me divorce that one who don't get your citizenship. And let me go marry the next one. Oh, That's a machine. It was. <laughs> it was an industry. And Madam Speaker, if there's anybody in this country that does not value their citizenship, that should be fine with them. Anybody that values our citizenship should not be fine with that. And we brought that to an end. And we're going to bring that to an end by strong amendments to the Citizenship Act and the Passport Act in 2024, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we're going to deal with smuggling of persons, human trafficking. Madam Speaker, when the last boat came here, I called the head of the OECS legal authority and I said, I want a meeting with all the other AGs in the region. I said, this can't work. Because we cannot be a region that subscribes to a common goal and we're allowing people
to come into different territories, make their way over here illegally. Some of them pay 2,500 US. I saw these statements. 2,500 US to a boatman in another, I'm not gonna name any countries, in another country in the OECS to get smuggled, either going to St. Martin or coming to St. Kitts or Nevis, as was one of the cases. I said, we have to have a common goal when it comes to illegal immigration. We have to protect our borders. And we all agreed that St. Kitts and Nevis will lead with the new smuggling legislation. We already have it drafted. While everybody's partying on Fourth Street, I'm going to be looking through it to bring it to the House early next year. Mm -hmm. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we're going to reform our criminal justice laws. And I know you're happy to hear that as a former prosecutor. Our average right now for a person between charge and conviction is around four to five years. Maybe three to five years. Some, some are quicker. We want to meet our Caribbean agreed goal of two years. And to do that, you have to be innovative. We're going to do things like plea negotiation legislation, special measures legislation, for example, so a person who's a victim of a sexual assault can testify very early in the process so they don't have to go through the trauma of two years down the line coming before court. So your lawyer gets ready. Your lawyer, your, the, the, the accused lawyer can do the cross-examination at a very early stage while it's fresh in the mind of the of the victim, what you call vulnerable victims, we're gonna bring legislation like that. We're also going to bring judge-only trials. Most of the people who are charged with firearm and, and um, ammunition charges, they choose to go to the magistrate's court, so they've been, they've been convicted by single judges, magistrates, for years. So now they have to face upstairs a single judge. We're gonna reduce the number of jurors. That's what we're gonna consider in after consultation with the bar. So then the process doesn't take as long. Most jurisdictions that have our population have a jury pool of seven or nine. We have 12 with alternates. So all of that will speed up the trial. So all of those things, Madam Speaker, we met with the Justice Committee, which consists of the, the judges of the, we met around two weeks ago, the judges of the High Court, the High Command of the Police, the President of the Bar Association, the DPP, the magistrates, who do matters, the permanent secretary in the ministry, myself, we all sat together and we developed a plan. And I want to see, and I've promised publicly uh, when I was on the radio with the new director of public prosecutions, that we want to bring this legislation by July next year. So you can look forward to that, Madam Speaker, because we want even people accused of crimes must get justice swiftly. To be a fair, reasonable, sustainable society, the justice system must work efficiently. And then people will have faith in it and trust in it, Madam Speaker. So we're going to do that. And also we're going to review the Vehicles and Road Traffic Act. Point system. Maybe if cabinet allows personalized license plate, raise revenue. That comes down to the Minister for Finance. This does yes. Different things with tints. I, people have raised issues. They say, listen, I, my business is transporting audio equipment for events. And my boss, I can't tint it. But if people see in and they see expensive audio equipment, they might want to break into my bus. So how are we going to deal with people like that? Yeah. So all of that, Madam Speaker, modernizing our laws instead of these, <coughs> these 19th century UK laws that we got from the colonizers. We're going to bring them into modern times, Madam Speaker. And Madam Speaker, we're also going to look at the Alien Land Holding License Act because we have to protect our people because our land is our wealth and we want to have a proper structure that is able to protect the land for our people and our children, grandchildren and those beyond them, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the Director of Public Prosecution's Office as an important element for justice to be served in our society, so we hired a professional DPP. We empowered two assistant DPPs and made arrangements to hire more lawyers and support staff to assist the proper functioning of the DPPO. Not just talk, action, and results. Madam Speaker, electoral office was a cesspool. That's the only way I can describe it. So we started to make changes, the supervisor of elections, with the assistance from the, assistance from the ministry. Further changes will come. 
and we have allocated $100,000 to begin the electoral reform process. So it's no longer just talk about electoral reform. We're putting our money where our mouth is, and in the new year, after consultations with the supervisor of elections, with the constitutional person responsible for elections, we are going to bring some electoral reforms to that office. Not just talk, Madam Speaker, action and results. Madam Speaker, I'm hoping one of these times you'll say it in response, the refrain. <laughs> but I'll aim to get that before the end of my presentation. <laughs> Madam Speaker, the Law Commission continues to do good work in maintaining I want people to record this. This is where your laws are. Lawcommission.gov.kn. That is a website, Madam Speaker, that has all of our laws on it. So nobody should be asking what the laws are. You go onto that website, you search dog, and the Dogs Act will come up. Madam Speaker. There's a Dogs Act. Yes, yes. And we also have discussed with the Ministry of Agriculture Refining our dog. I thought you passed it, Doc. Um, yes, did. yes, did. yes. Yes. Of course. The Dogs Licensing Act. And what that act does, it, make, it designates certain dogs as dangerous dogs. Ah. So you have to have a special license to have those type of dogs and certain things that you cannot do with those dogs, which was a debate that came up, particularly in Nevis. I think it was in October or November last year, 2022. After that incident where a child was mauled to death by a dog, yeah. we met with agriculture and we charted a path forward to kind of um, rejig some of the, the elements of the, the Dogs Act, which is strong already, just to get it so that some of those dangerous dogs can be taken off the street. The UK just had a big hoopla about that, different types of dogs to designate des um, as dangerous dogs, so we're going to look into that in 2020, 2024. But you can find that legislation on lawcommission.gov.kn. Madam Speaker, one of my promises during my short time is to make the land registry of this government the most efficient department in government. The reason being, Madam Speaker, if we want to compete globally for capital investment, we must have a speedy land transfer process. We must move up on the ease of doing business scale. So what we have done we have engaged three land registrars. So from January, there will be not one, not two, but three persons who are capable of signing land documents in St. Kitts and Nevis. Nevis now has a dedicated land registry. Very nice place. Very nice workers. At our Christmas dinner, the workers were dancing. They look happy. I don't know what the Premier is doing over there, but they seem very happy. <laughs> but we are collaborating with the NIA because those persons who work in the land registry in Nevis are employees of the NIA. But they are, the leader of that office is the federal land registrar. So we recruited one of our own people, brought her back to St. Kitts. She is now going to be in charge of Nevis. We have our registrar here and we have another assistant registrar here. So when one is on vacation, there will be two left. And we are, I, I, I made a plea to them. We had a, 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 a training session with the staff, and I made a plea to them. I told them how important it is for the land registry to be efficient. So no longer will people wait in months, years for their land titles. We're talking about days. And that's where we're going to try to get to by the end of 2024. It it's a process, Madam Speaker, but we have a plan and we have a vision. So, Madam Speaker, not just talk, actual action. And for this one, I guarantee you, when I come to speak next year, if I'm here. You are going to be alive. No, well, I mean, the Prime Minister wishes to keep me here. I will be talking about the results of the land registry transformation. Nobody voted for me, you know. <laughs> Listen, nobody voted for me. I work, I work at the behest of the persons who were elected in this house. So once they want to keep me here, I will stay here. Nobody going to be fooling me. <laughs> Madam Speaker, in 2023, and I'm very proud of this, because when I came to office, 
in August last year, our high court was shut down. And that can't be. High court is one of the most important um, institutions in our country. So what I did was I said, we have to figure this out. People cannot be going to the police training school to be, to, to be attending criminal court. And the prime minister needed the police training school to train police officers. So what we did at the ministry with the help of my PS who is here, Diana Francis, hard working PS, is we figured it out. Madam Speaker, we figured it out. And we moved the high court to the Charles Amory building at Fort Lance. And I'm, I'm informed, despite some early hiccups, that, that happens when there's renovations. The judges, the staff, the lawyers are now pleased because they have a dedicated space where they can conduct, conduct civil court and criminal court. The hotel court. <laughs> the hotel court, because it has nice views. Yeah. Madam Speaker, they said the court's not supposed to be so comfortable. When you go on the balcony of the court at Fort Lands, it's the kind of breeze that hitting you there. The judge is happy. The judge is happy because they have comfortable surroundings. And that's very important for the administration of justice, Madam Speaker. So, Madam Speaker, I'm happy that we were able to do that. And my hope is to be able to come to this house for 2025 and to get money to buy those properties so we don't have to rent them, so that they can be part of the government housing stock to house permanently the magistrate's courts. As my goal, Madam Speaker, is to bring the High Court back to where it should be, at the Sir Lee L. Moore Judicial and Legal Services Building, the historic location of our High Court that was burned down a couple days after I was born. They said I brought, I brought it bad luck, but I don't know. I, but was, was then rebuilt. And we want to refurbish it very soon, Madam Speaker, to bring the High Court back down to East Independence Square. Madam Speaker, we also brought new clerks for the Magistrates Court because they want the staff. And the senior manager said, we need new clerks. We, we, the PS held interviews, and we hired two new clerks. I thought, boy, these are, these are nice gentlemen and a nice young lady when I met them. Little did I know that the lawyers love them because they've come in with energy and vigor. And the lawyer came to me and said, I love the new clerks. They're just working so well. And I was pleased to hear that, Madam Speaker. Because when you bring people into the ministry, you want them to work hard, and you want them, the people who are interacting with that, that, um, that department to be happy with the people that are there. So human resources is very important, Madam Speaker. So I'm happy about that. And in 2024, we will implement a new bailiff system. Currently, we have, at the Magistrates Court, I think around seven bailiffs on staff, Madam Speaker. But there's not peak efficiency. So the key is, when you, when you file your summons, Madam Speaker, you should be get your hearing within a couple of weeks, not months. And saying it's a small place, everybody knows everybody in different communities, it shouldn't be so hard to serve documents. So one of my goals for 2024, Madam Speaker, is to bring in a new bailiff system. Some might be upset, but I think it'll be the most efficient system. Madam Speaker, I cannot say how much, I cannot express in words how proud I am of Mrs. Jeanne Williams Knight, who leads our intellectual property office, Madam Speaker. <laughs> Everybody's a product, eh? Everybody. <laughs> Madam Speaker, in November 2023, last month, Sankis and Nevis was the epicenter of intellectual property in the Caribbean. We hosted for the first time the World Intellectual Property Organization's meeting of heads of IP offices and IP ministers of the Caribbean. The biggest turnout ever of ministers. Madam Speaker, I have to take a little credit for it. Because I was WhatsApping all my minister colleagues. I said, y'all better come to St. Kitts because I, I, y'all ain't gonna show me up. Because, Madam Speaker, it's the first time the Director General of the I World Intellectual Property Organization came to the Caribbean. First time, the Minister of the Creative Economy, the Prime Minister and I, sat in a breakfast meeting with him, and he was so pleased with the welcome that the Minister of the Year in Tourism did for welcoming them. 
They couldn't believe how wonderful St. Kitts was, Madam Speaker. Yes. Couldn't believe how nice St. Kitts was. And we had a great meeting. A great meeting. The theme was intellectual property, innovation to prosperity. And Madam Speaker, St. Kitts and Nevis, by this gesture, became the first country in the world, not in the region, Madam Speaker, in the world, to launch the IPN Sports Project from WIPO, which is that project, Madam Speaker, will unlock the economic value of our local sports industry. People can now make money from the talent. It is arranged by the World Intellectual Property Organization, a UN entity, Madam Speaker. And I'm so looking forward to results of that because I know our able registrar, Jan Williams Knight, will make it happen in collaboration with the, the Ministry of Sports and the Creative Economy, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the Access to Justice Agency. I came last year and I said to the people of this country that we are going to try to fulfill our objective of reducing inequalities, SDG 10, and also creating strong institutions, SDG 16. And after I came from the Commonwealth Minister's meeting last year, and I had a discussion with the Attorney General from Rwanda, who sat next to me at the conference, and told me about how it worked in Rwanda, which is a model country in many regards. Right, right um, member for number six, Rwanda is looked at in the international community yes. as a wonder. Yes. And I said to him, Knowing we want to... Where we said, Doc? Knowing where it came from. Yes, where it came from. Yeah. Yeah, to where it is now. It's a model country in Africa. And I asked, how is your legal aid system structured? And he explained to me, and I said, boy, that's a great idea. You mind if I take that back to Bastia? He said, no problem, AG, no problem. So I was able to convince the Minister of Finance to allow us to have access to justice agency, which has four departments within it, Madam Speaker. The legal aid department, where people want representation, whether it be for their divorce, or a land issue, or some other issue, can get a lawyer for free to represent them in court. That's one, we had that already. Two, we're going to bring, and we have budgeted for 2024, a public defender's department, where there will be lawyers who will be paid by the state to defend persons accused. The judge of the high court said to me the other day, too many persons are coming unrepresented. And for justice to be served, they must have proper representation, because that's their constitutional right. We are going to ensure that people, even if they can't afford representation, will be represented properly in the criminal court in defense of their cases. Madam Speaker, we're going to have a mediation department. Anybody in any community from Rice's to St. Paul's who have a dispute with a neighbor, and they don't want to go to court, but they just need somebody to listen and work it out. They'll be able to step into the office and say, I have an issue with my neighbor. I would like a trained mediator to come and have a discussion with us. You make an appointment, you come, you have a discussion, trained mediator, problem solved. People who cannot afford to go to court will have an opportunity to work out their issues, whether it's inter-family inter or neighborhood in the communities. They'll be able to walk into their office, not pay a thing, and get a professional media to sit down with them to try to work out the issues. We need to be able to resolve our issues without violence, Madam Speaker. And the mediation department in the Access to Justice Agency will do so. And lastly, Madam Speaker, and this is a brainchild of the member for number eight, the Honorable Prime Minister. He said, in your agency, AG, I want a restorative justice department. Restorative justice is to ensure that people who have committed crimes in the past when they come out, they no longer choose a life of crime. They can then be brought back into the society and be a responsible member of the society. So in that department, we'll have officers who are assigned to the prison. When somebody's coming out, say somebody did a break-in in their community by somebody across the road, and they're about to come out from serving their 12-month sentence, the restorative justice officers are going to Set up a mediation with the victim, 
of the break-in and the person who was convicted so that they can have a discussion before that person comes back into the society, into the community, to try to resolve whatever victim, convict, convict issues that they have. And that, Madam Speaker, we hope, will also stop the recidivism that happens with persons coming out of prison and then reverting to a life of crime. And Madam Speaker, I'm going to end talking about the capital projects in the ministry and the AGO. We have a capital project to assist with the digitization of the land registry, which will deal with the efficiency of the land registry. We also have a capital project to restore the old CNC supermarket property, which houses the land registry and intellectual property office. We need to fix the roof, so we've assigned some money for that. We also have assigned money to rehabilitate the Sir Lee Elmore Judicial and Legal Services Complex. As I said, a very important complex in our history and for our ministry and for the justice system. And we, we're going to begin preparing the plan to make that building sustainable for a long time to come, Madam Speaker. And Madam Speaker, I'm very proud to announce that we'll be building a new Ministry of Justice and Legal Affairs headquarters to house the Attorney General's office, the DPP's office, and the Access to Justice Agency on Bay Road, Bastille. We sent out a competition, Madam Speaker, for persons to design the new building. We got 15 unique submissions, and they were reviewed anonymously. The talent and creativity of Ketitians and Divisions are second to none, Madam Speaker. I can tell you that. And the Cabinet met, a special team with experts, architects, persons from the Ministry met, and the consensus was on submission 735. But what I plan to do is to announce the winners and give them their prizes at the site when we, un when we, look, when we unveil the poster on Bay Road. So that everybody for Carnival, when they're jamming down at Juve, can see the sustainable, energy smart, environmentally smart, permanent, Ministry of Justice and Legal Affairs headquarters on Bay Road Bastia. So we're going to do that shortly, Madam Speaker. Yes, Madam Speaker. And we have allocated $2.1 million to start the construction of that project, and we hope to complete it in 2024. Madam Speaker, serious times require serious people. The St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party administration is prepared to make the important, tough decisions to make lives better for our people, not just for today, but for decades to come. We're not thinking now for now, Madam Speaker. We're thinking about the sustainable island state that we want to build for our people. But we need everyone on board, Madam Speaker. All hands must be on deck. And Madam Speaker, I don't normally use quotes but I just saw one recently, a couple of days ago, from Margaret Thatcher, former Prime Minister of the UK, strong woman. And she said, disciplining yourself to do what you know is right and important, although difficult, is the high road to pride, self-esteem, and personal satisfaction. I am personally satisfied, Madam Speaker, in doing what is right for the good people of St. Kitts and Nevis. That is what keeps me going. And I will continue, despite all the noise, as a proud product of a strong upbringing, especially by two strong women, one raised in Rice's Village, Gingerland, and one raised in St. Paul's. My back broad. Joy, that's what we say? Broad, Madam Speaker. I plan to continue doing the good that I can do for my people, as long as the people want me to do it, Madam Speaker. May it please you.